Hello and welcome to Youth in Agriculture and like always this is where I get to bring you informative stories of Kenyan youth who have found opportunities along the agricultural value chain and converted them into commercial enterprises. Today we are coming to you from Kenyatta Road and this is in Kiambu County where we will be talking about cherry tomato farming and like we know tomato farming is one of the most popular horticulture farming here in the country which has a ready market both in the local and the international phase. So keep it right here on Youth in Agriculture. My name is Susan Mwangi. So come with me, we will be meeting uh, Caleb Ocheng, who is the CEO of uh, Hydroponic Enterprise. And this is an enterprise he started four years ago. He will be telling us his story, how he started, and what even gave you that motivation to go into farming. In this farm, we grow cherry tomatoes. That is our major crop here. We also do capsicum, but today, We'll talk on cherry tomatoes and we'll show you how we produce. And our farm is fully hydroponics. We'll want our viewers to know how we do this thing and produce this massive production. Karibu sana. Asante. But now, kama kawaida, before you even take us now to the depth of yes. everything that, because I can see there is a lot of technology, yes. there is a lot of integration and you'll be educating us on that. Yeah. But we want to know, where are you coming from with agriculture? Is this something you really wanted to do, to do from the time you were growing up? Uh, probably, I never knew that one day I'll be a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I was a teacher, let's say, some years back, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a program uh, that uh, came up and uh, we had some scholarship and uh, we were trained. We'll talk about it later, uh, uh, whereby after g being trained, we acquired loans from Equity Bank, and uh, this is where now we invested in. And that's how I started growing cherry tomatoes. How is it so far? Is this something you're proud of being a part of? I'm very proud. I started as an individual. Right now I'm running an enterprise, so I'm really proud of it. So where are you going to take us from here? So right now I'll take you to where we begin this work and I'll show you how simple agriculture is. Caleb, mm -hmm. the first thing that has caught my attention is that we don't have any soil. Yes, here. yes. How do you do farming without soil? So this is a hydroponic technology. In hydroponics, we run away from soil borne infection and also soil borne uh, 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 pests. Wadudu when you kwa mchanga. So in uh, this case, we use uh, volcanic rocks, uh, which we have around here. We call them pumies. So the volcanic rocks, are, they are inert, free from other elements. And for that reason, we will use them to anchor, as anchorage uh, to our crops. So uh, in this volcanic crops, uh, what we do is just to treat it to make sure that we balance the pH. That is the treating it. So once we have balanced the pH, uh, it is now ready to be used. We just plant our crops on them. And then uh, feeding we do through fertigation, of course. So uh, the work of the pumice will just to hold uh, the plants and to make sure that the plant's uh, rootings have been tightly held. Now, uh, by use of the drip lines, uh, we will feed our crops. And uh, here, I know you asked me many questions in your mind that uh, how do they feed? Uh, where is the food? Now, for our case, uh, the food, we just take uh, the normal fertilizers. We mix them on a proposed ratio to get all the 17 elements that the plant require. Now, after mixing the fertilizers, we dilute them in water. Now, that water which has elements or which have nutrients, we call it nutrient solution, is what we use to feed our plants. So our plants get their food from water. It wets the pumice and then our roots, which is inside the pumice, will just feed directly from that. So as simple as that. Wow. Mm. And I'm interested to know, where do you get this pumice? This is this is what you call pumice now. Yes, this yes. This is the volcanic rocks. rocks. Yes. Where do you source them from? Volcanic rocks. We source them where we have volcanic in mountains where we have volcanic eruptions. For our case, we get them in Naivasha, Mount Longnot, majorly. 
what size is this greenhouse and how many crops will mm -hmm. you be planting? So plants, in, how many plants? Okay, mm -hmm. in this uh, greenhouse, we, it is uh, 8 by 24 meters. And uh, basically, I think uh, it can take 700 to 850 plants capacity okay. of cherry tomatoes or capsicum. Okay. Yeah. So I know most of our viewers that normally mm. follow this program, they mm. want also, at the end of the program, they want to to, uh, to to see if this is an opportunity they would want to tap into. Okay. And it's good that we also educate them on how does the costing look like. Mm. Now for somebody who is already at this stage and thinking, how much would I require mm. to set up this kind of a greenhouse, mm. to set up, you know, to get the, the, uh, the volcanic rocks, mm -hmm. to buy my plants, my seedlings, mm. how much are we looking at? Uh, it's not much. To a farmer who have been doing greenhouse farming, you'll just make a normal greenhouse, which uh, for the steel it will cost you between 200 to 300,000. Uh, that's uh, depending on the size you will prefer. And then uh, for the pumice, it is not that expensive. When you go there, it's something to do with 20 to 30,000 for the greenhouse because uh, pumice is also used as a uh, buffer material. Up, uh, at, at, at the at the spaces uh, whereby we don't grow the crops, yeah. you can you can feel it. the walk parts. You can no? uh, see that we have placed the pumice just to make sure that the greenhouse is dry uh, to, to avoid that wet condition that will bring fungal infection. That is good for a start. Mm. And also now when we come to harvesting, we also mm. want to see mm. how we are getting back our money. Oh, okay. Because there has to be a return on investment, right? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so where are you taking us from here? So from now, I'll take you to a greenhouse mm -hmm. so that I will uh, show you what we do to the plants, the crop husbandry and all that we do uh, to make sure that we get our returns that you've just asked for. Wow, I can see some some ripe cherry tomatoes here. Yes, so this is one of our old greenhouse. Although they you look young because of the trellising that have been done here. We have different varieties that we grow here. Uh, we grow indeterminate varieties. So indeterminate varieties, these are crops that uh, will take you a long time when you harvest them. We have determinate varieties that will get, uh, let's say, three months, you harvest for a month, then it is done. But for indeterminate varieties, we will grow it, it will take three months to mature, then after three months, you will harvest it for six to eight months. And then from there now, you will get, it, get away with it. So the variety that we focus on are the oval-shaped uh, varieties and also a little bit of round varieties, but people like the oval-shaped varieties because of their shelf life. Cherry tomatoes are consumed a lot locally. Uh, initially, when we started, we never knew, but uh, once we grew cherry tomatoes, it was, uh, the order was too high that we had to expand, and uh, it is consumed much locally. Uh, if you go to Curry Falls, Beyond Fruits, you'll find that there is a lot of packs of cherry tomatoes there. And by weekends there, you cannot see them because uh, they are consumed a lot locally. Some of them are being exported. And uh, the main use of these cherry tomatoes is as salads. People use them as salads. Uh, we also sometimes uh, did value addition to them, whereby we took them to Malindi, we dried them and uh, grind them to cherry tomatoes powder, which is very expensive and it earned us good money. You don't have a kind of that mentality that it will go bad very easily. So with that, cherry tomato powder also used to get us some cash. But uh, for now, the market have widened up. We just sell it as fresh cherry tomatoes. You said that uh, the cherry tomato has a good local market. Yes. And maybe if you can tell me mm. what makes it a more unique, a more special variety mm. than the other Other's regular true. variety that you're used to in the market. Okay. Uh, one of uh, the most important things about cherry tomatoes is that its breaks ratio, that is the sugar level, is very high. It is sweet. Number two thing is that uh, it is the king of salads it is mainly used for salad. If you compare its salads with the other tomatoes, cherry tomatoes is the best and you will like it. It is also used to make sauces, uh, the sweet sauces, you know. They can blend it with other tomatoes just to increase the sugar content of the 
of the source. I want to understand, mm. do you plant the seeds, do you uh, get the seedlings mm -hmm. and how long does it take for you from planting to harvesting, mm. how long does it take? We buy the seeds, we take them to raising plants. We have uh, several raising plants. We talk of Plantex, Order Seed, Honor Seedlings. Uh, they raise it for us, then for us we focus on production. How much do you buy the seeds? A packet of a thousand seeds goes for 24,000. It is very expensive. That is seeds alone minus the propagation yes. stage? Okay. Yes, and then you go and propagate it. It is affordable, something like uh, 2,000 or less. Uh, so, uh, in propagation unit, it will take uh, four weeks so that we get our seedlings. And then uh, we bring the seedlings, it, uh, we plant them. It will take us uh, two and a half months. In hydroponics uh, system, it will take you two and a half months. In uh, a convectional system, it will take you three months. So in cherry tomatoes, you'll get that uh, we have fruits down here. Mm -hmm. And then we have another set of fruits. I'll call them clusters, a cluster, a cluster, a cluster, a cluster, a cluster. And right now you can see on top, on the, at the tip here, we have a cluster which is developing. So what we will do, this week I'll harvest from the, uh, from the base cluster. And then next week I'll harvest from the following cluster. Like that, like that, and uh, this plant keeps on growing. Uh, when it gets on top here, I trellis it back down. Let me bring you back to this particular plant and mm. you say that it has been here for seven months already. Yeah. And how many cages can you say you already have harvested from this one plant? Uh, I've not done the math, but I have done tonnage because uh, I do 100 to 150 kg on a weekly basis in this unit. How much are you selling per kilo right now? Uh, right now we sell at uh, between 180 to 200 shillings per kilo. Soilless farming, hydroponic farming, and all these techniques, and all these modern way of farming. Mm. You feel like this is something you would like more farmers to engage in. Yeah. If you are going to talk about, mm. you know, a, a profitable farming business, mm. because we know many farmers are in it, but they are not making much out of it. If every farmer uh, would uh, adapt hydroponic farming, you'll do away with the uh, soil bone infections, and with that. Uh, the food production in this region will be very high because no farmers will be running at a loss. So, Caleb, thank you so much for the mm -hmm. information so far. Mm -hmm. But you know we still have a few more greenhouses because we still need to understand more mm -hmm. about the crop management mm -hmm. processes. Yeah. Yes, but at this point we will be taking a short commercial break, mm -hmm. but don't go too far mm -hmm. because there is still so much in store for you. This is Youth in Agriculture. My name is Susan Mwangi.